Hi, this is the tutorial for the introduction to Quantlib Part 7. In the previous part of the tutorial, we have already gone through how to price a plan when needed options in Quantlib in different ways, such as an analytical method and the Monte Carlo simulation method. We also assume that the underlying stock price movement may follow different processes, such as the geometric planning motions with jump and without jump. In the part 4 of the tutorial, we took some time to build up the whole structure of the option pricing framework for the analytical methods. Assuming that the stock price movement followed the black show modeling, then in part 5 of the tutorial, I have demonstrated how easy we can change the pricing engine and the stock price movement process in order to price the options with the jump diffusion modeling and electrically. Then in the part 6 of the tutorial, we change the pricing engines again to price the options with flexuals modeling using the Monte Carlo simulations. So what we left is to price the options with jump diffusion modeling using the Monte Carlo simulation. However, currently Quantlib has not implemented this jump diffusion process for the Monte Carlo simulation. To complete this piece of work, what we will do in this tutorial is to inherit the class from the Bradshaw's process and then add the jump components into the derived class. Let's review the jump diffusion process again. To model the jump, we model how often the jump occurs by the Poisson distributions where we need to specify the number of jumps per year by the parameters lambda that is the jump intensity. We also model how big the jump is by the log number distributions where we need to specify the jump volatility and the jump mean by the parameters sigma j and mu j respectively. In the last tutorial, we have used unit discretizations to model the geometric boundary motions without jump. Now, in order to model the jump behavior, we will model both the drift term and the diffusion term in this unit discretization method. For the drift term, the drift rate will be reduced by this product where the parameters lambda indicate the jump intensity and the parameters kappa indicates the expected jump size in terms of the percentage change that is equal to the average jump size minus 1. For the diffusion term, in each discrete time period delta t, we first sample the number of jumps occur pt by the Poisson distribution. And then the diffusion movement will be adjusted by the total jump, where each jump ji is followed the log normal distributions with the jump mean mu j and jump volatility sigma j. So let's begin the programming work. Firstly, we need to inherit the Blackstone process and form the derived class. Let's name the derived class DSMJ process. Then we can add the additional parameters for the jump modeling. And we also need to add two random number generators to generate the random variable 
PT and JI that we have taught in the previous slide. These parameters together with the random variables will then be used to modify the drift and diffusion terms in the Monte Carlo simulation. After we have created the derived class, next we should initialize the parameters properly by building up the constructor. For the jump parameters, we may allow the main program to pass in the specifications and initialize these parameters accordingly. For the random number generators, we may simply initialize them by using the system clock. After that, we may implement the functions for the drift time adjustment which is equal to the jump intensity lambda multiplied by the expected jump size kappa and then multiplied by the delta time t. Next, we may implement the function for the diffusion terms adjustment. We have already implemented a random number generator. It can generate the random numbers that are uniformly distributed in between 0 and 1. However, what we want to generate is the random variable pt that follow the required Poisson distribution. To do so, we need to construct the cumulative Poisson distribution. With the rate parameters equal to the jump intensity lambda times the delta t. We can then inversely map the uniform random number to obtain the random variable pt that representing the number of jumps occurs within this delta time t. After obtaining pt, Then, for each jump, we should get the size ji that follow the required normal distribution. Again, we will use the cumulative normal distributions to inversely map the uniform random number. And obtain this random variable ji. The sum of these jumps will be the adjustment for the diffusion term.
After implementing the functions for both drift time and diffusion time adjustments, now it is the time to override the original evolve functions that is used to generate the price path in the Monte Carlo simulation. By the modified evolve functions that include the drift time and the diffusion time adjustment. Okay, now we have finished creating this developer card. That enables us to perform the Monte Carlo simulations with jump diffusion. Let's use this developer card in our main program. In the tutorial last time, we used the pseudo random generator to produce the price path. For the illustration's purpose, I will use the low discrepancy generator to produce the path this time and keep other parameters unchanged. One thing we should notice is that the node discrepancy generator does not have the analysis for the standard error. Therefore, we should also remove the standard error analysis in the program when we are using the load discrepancy generator. Let's also bring back the previous code to apply the options with jump diffusions using an analytical method so that we can compare the Monte Carlo simulation result with it. Now, by using our derived cast DSMJ process, we construct the stop price movement object and the pointer of the object. And then we can replace the original Braxel process in the pricing engines by our derived class DSMJ process.
Okay, now we are ready to compile the code. The compilation is success. Let's run the code and see what happens. Here is the option price from the analytical methods that we have done in the previous tutorial. And here is the option pricing from the Monte Carlo simulation method. As you can see, the Monte Carlo simulation result gets closer and closer to the analytical method, but the computational time is also increased. Okay, that's all in this tutorial. We have successfully reused part of the quantity code. to build our own Monte Carlo simulation for the option pricing with jump diffusion. Please keep in mind that the reusability is one of the objectives of Quantip to reduce the implementation time and errors when we develop the financial modeling and pricing system. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you can start using Quantip to implement your project now. Goodbye.